What's up everybody? In this video we're going to talk about the different phase changes or changes in state from solid liquid gas to one another. Okay, so here's a couple of things. First off, phase. Okay, phase is a part of a system that is uniform in composition and properties. So for all intents and purposes, what we're doing, we're talking about the solid phase, the liquid phase, or the gaseous phase. Okay, and in the previous uh, slides that we've already gone over and the notes, we have gone over the common phase changes. Okay, we've gone over condensation, which is what you would see up here in the clouds. Okay, so condensation is going to be the change from a gas to a liquid. Okay, we have seen evaporation, which is going to be when you have a liquid go to a gas. All right, and that would happen down here in the sea or in the uh, lake here. We would see our melting, which is going to be when we have our solid to our liquid, which would happen up here in the mountains when you see the mountain snow melt and come down and make the little lakes and streams and rivers and all that stuff. And then we see freezing, okay, and freezing is going to be our liquid to our solid, which could happen up here um, when it was very cold, okay? So those are the common changes of state, all right, and those are the ones that we're going to go over first, all right? So this right here is the heating curve of H2O, and I am very, very particular that I say H2O and not water, and that is for a couple of reasons. Number one, we are talking about H2O in the solid, the liquid, and the gaseous phase here. And you'll notice the solids are all going to be closely packed together, so this is going to be solid ice. Okay, the liquid is going to be loose and more fluid, so this is where we're going to have water. And the gaseous phase is where we are going to have steam. Okay, you'll notice on this left hand side our y axis is going to be temperature. I'm going to give it the units of degrees Celsius so that we can start to add in where these different things are. Okay, and heat energy here is in essence what we're doing with time. Okay, so time that heat is added. All right, so let's first try to figure out where we can put in our different temperatures and what occurs. Okay, so where can H2O be ice? Okay, well, at this point right here, this is the melting or freezing point. This is zero degrees Celsius. So how cold can ice go? Ice can go all the way down to negative 273 degrees Celsius, or your absolute zero. That's why frostbite is so dangerous, because you can end up having um, temperatures that are so much lower than just zero degrees Celsius. Okay, at zero degrees Celsius, you are going to see this plateau. And this plateau is where your substance freezes or melts. Okay, so this is similar to what we said in the other video where this uh, melting point or freezing point is going to be our um, fence. And it depends on whether you are melting or freezing by adding or removing your temperature um, and whether it's going to be um, doing what it's doing. Okay, so where can H2O be in the water phase. It can be in the water phase from zero degrees Celsius all the way up here to a hundred degrees Celsius. Okay, so this is all liquid water. Okay, you warm it up by adding temperature, you cool it down by removing temperature. Okay, and then you will see right here another plateau. And a plateau right here would be where water boils to steam or where it would condense from steam back down to water. 
This is going to be the boiling point, the normal boiling point, and that's going to be 100 degrees Celsius. So then lastly, where can water be steam? Water can be steam from 100 degrees Celsius up to infinity and beyond. Who knows? Who knows? Okay, we don't know how hot it can go. There is an absolute zero, but there is not an absolute hot. So it is always more dangerous to be burned by steam than it would to be burned by boiling water because boiling water maxes out at 100 degrees Celsius where you could be at two, 300 degrees Celsius, who knows, maybe even thousands of degrees. We don't know how hot it can be. Okay, we know that the speed of light is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th, but it ends up being um, something a little different. Okay, so this is the heating curve. A cooling curve would look exactly opposite. All right, you would see the same five parts, but you would see the opposite slope. Okay, so again, you would see here at 100 degrees Celsius, things would condense from uh, gas to liquid. And then here at zero degrees Celsius, they would freeze into uh, the solid part. Okay, so this one is specific with that hundred and zero degrees Celsius for water. Um, if you are heating, you are increasing in temperature. If you are cooling, you are decreasing in temperature. But it definitely shows you where things are moving and where things are not moving. So we end up seeing that there is a change of state here, and there's a change of state here, and then this is where you see things that are heating um, or cooling, depending on which direction you're looking in. Okay, so on the hand-drawn graph, okay, this is your change of state, this is your change of state, and this is where you have gas, liquids, and solids. Okay, so oftentimes, all right, when you're looking at these heating curves, things that are important to remember. Phase changes occur at constant temperatures. When we're in school and we determine the melting point or freezing point of lauric acid, which is essentially um, solid soap, like a bar of soap, okay, we figure out that as you are freezing it, okay, it makes a plateau and then freezes some more. And as you are heating it, it makes a, come on, you can do it. It makes a plateau as well in the opposite direction. And then it heats up a little bit more. So whenever there is a phase change, they are depicted as those flat plateaus. You have a constant temperature during a phase change. So even though you are heating it up, it is going to stay at that temperature. And the reason for that is all of the extra energy that you would put into your Bunsen burner or something like that underneath it is gonna go into breaking the bonds that make it in the liquid phase. So you'll notice that every single time that we have used our Bunsen burners, okay, and you're measuring the temperature of your boiling water, it doesn't change. It's 100 degrees Celsius, even though my Bunsen burner is 600 degrees Celsius. So the reason for that is all of the extra energy that goes into it goes into breaking the bonds. It stays at 100, and it is the actual steam that comes off of it that would be greater, uh, greater than 100 degrees Celsius instead. Okay, so with all of this solid liquid gas changing okay we are always asked this fundamental question does a solid have to melt before it comes to gas and the answer is no you can go directly from a solid to a gas and a gas to a solid without passing through the liquid phase okay it's like playing monopoly okay do not pass go directly from one to the other and that is through this part right here this is through sublimation 
okay? Sublimation to sublime is to go from the solid phase to the gas phase without becoming a liquid. Okay, this is where we see the awesomeness of dry ice, and I always bring some in and make some uh, dry ice uh, boo bubbles. Okay, so it's basically um, soap uh, solution, and we use the CO2 bubbles and uh, get it to come through, and it sticks oh so nicely to um, like a towel, and you get these lovely little bubbles that then burst, so definitely check that out in there. You see dry ice happen with these solid air fresheners. If you open them up, you can end up seeing that there's this like solid goo inside. This is what mothballs are for, those little um, dichlorobenzene, little um, smelly things that smell like old people. Sorry, old people listening. All right, and it goes directly from a solid to a gas, so it gives off that vapor, it keeps the moths away. This is iodine. Iodine goes directly from a solid, um, which is like a gray color, to a gas, which is going to be purple. It's so pretty. All right, and um, you can pass from one of these stages to another without having to pass through the liquid phase. Nothing is going to get wet in any of these scenarios, okay? So the opposite is true as well, and that is deposition, okay? Deposition is when a gas goes directly to a solid, and we see this when it snows. So this is going to be possibly the biggest, um, misnomer and misconstrued fact from the real world, okay? Snow is not what happens when it goes from a solid, or I'm sorry, from a gas to a liquid to a solid. That's going to be sleet. And when we see um, deposition occurs, we see these lovely, lovely crystals occur. I actually took this picture on the snowsuit of my son when it was really nice and cold, and we can see all these beautiful little um, snowflakes here. Frost is going to be deposition. Okay, so these lovely little crystals that occur is um, exactly that. All right, it is not going to be when it goes from a liquid or a solid, um, a liquid to a solid, okay? And um, the next video will actually talk all about what the different weather systems and weather stuff is. All right, so this is the nice summarizing um, phase chart for everything that we see. Um, and I would definitely make note of this, okay? Solids. Um, changing into the liquid phase is going to be from the melting or the freezing um, point, which is actually the exact same point. And then the liquid to the gaseous phase is going to be, in general, vaporization or condensation. This can be evaporation, this can be vaporization, or this can be boiling. Okay, depends on if you're talking about open or closed containers, and check out the videos for those. All right, you'll see here over on the side, it says the enthalpy of the system. This is the dis, uh, this is the amount of energy that the system has. Okay, so you can end up seeing that here we have low energy and here we have high energy. Okay, so low energy to high energy. So basically this would be your colder temperatures and this would be your warmer temperatures. And then lastly, you will see that you can go directly back and forth between the gas and the solid phase through deposition and sublimation. So hopefully this ends up totally summarizing what it is to go between solids, liquids, and gases and back and forth.